G'day, it's Adam, VK4GHZ. I've got a Nexion firmware update for the K3NG Rotator Controller project. This Nexion release is designed to work with Goody's latest Arduino code release on the 19th of October, the fourth release on the 19th of October from Goody. And what it does, it provides a much better startup experience for the, uh, the, for the Nexion screen. So we've sort of overcome those handshaking issues that uh, some of you guys were experiencing. Now that release that Goody made the, uh, on the 19th of October is backward compatible with previous Nexion versions of mine. So there's, there's really no reason not to update the Arduino side. And look, while you're at it, you might as well update your Nexion as well. Okay, let's take a quick look at the K3NG rotator controller code and specifically the rotatorfeatures.h file. Now down the bottom there, you'll see two lines, define option depreciated Nexion initialization code one and uh, version two. So if you do want to, for whatever reason, use any uh, older version of Nexion firmware, just make sure you uh, remove those to enable that line. Now, I, f I forget what, um, what the difference was between version one and version two, but there was a little bit of tinkering going on there to, um, to, uh, to try and optimize the startup. However, if you do want to use the latest version of Nexion firmware, just make sure both of those lines are commented out. Now during the process of testing, I actually found a bug in the five inch and seven inch versions where now this one um, is running an older version of software. So if we're on the big azimuth um, page here and we, we use the go to functionality and I'm assuming because no one has mentioned anything, they don't actually use this. But if you try to uh, enter a, a go to grid, uh, grid square, say QF7, something or something seven, the seven doesn't actually work. Every other number worked except the seven. So that's a bug we found, kind of a one in a million, just a random thing that I found during uh, testing. So that issue has already been fixed on, on this latest Nexion release. So if that interests you, stick around. That's coming up. All right, moving along. Now let's uh, let's just take a quick look at the version, uh, the Nexion firmware version that never quite made it. I was actually working on a, a solution to um, to address this startup problem. Now, what was happening is that the Nexion screen, the way I originally wrote the firmware was that the Nexion screen would power up. It would listen for the GSC variable. That's the um, the, the global system capability message from the Arduino. It would sit there and listen for so many hundreds of milliseconds and if nothing was received it would move on and it would just assume that you just had a basic azimuth system. Now the time that it sat there listening for that GSC variable um, kind of worked for most for most people. There was the odd situation where it didn't work um, so what I've done now with this latest Nexion release is you power the system up and the Nexion screen will just sit there in a loop and it will constantly listen for that GSC variable. However long that takes for your Arduino, or whether you're using an Arduino or a Teensy, it doesn't matter. So however long it takes for the microcontroller to send that message to the Nexion screen, it doesn't matter because the Nexion will just sit there looping, waiting for it. Once it receives that GSC variable, then it will move on and um, continue on to the, uh, the, your designated um, uh, uh, start screen. So let's just take a look at the, the version that um, I was working on, never quite released it. So to get around this, this problem not receiving the GSC variable, on the about page I added a slider where you could introduce um, a variable length time to wait. Now I'm gonna set that to minimum because I know that's not gonna work. So when we, will set that. So when I power this up, again, it's gonna turn it off. Back up again. It's in the basic cheeseburger mode. Mm. All right, so the screen wasn't listening quite long enough for that GSC message to come from the Arduino. So what we'll do here, I'm just gonna extend this out to a thousand milliseconds. Reboot the thing. As you can see, 
that was plenty of time to receive that GSC message. So the, the Nexion screen knew what features you'd set on the Arduino side and it can display the things accordingly. Anyway, that, um, that was one solution. I didn't think, you know, it was a little bit ass about. So this new release, 2021-10 of 23 in conjunction with the goodies code 2021-10-1904 onwards um, is a much nicer way. Now if you have a look at the three and a half inch I've programmed here, we'll turn it on. There you go, it's read the GSC message and it's just moved on to my designated start page. Uh, there's a few cosmetic changes in that boot up. We will have a look at that again and I'll uh, freeze the video. It's telling us the Arduino version, our features and our rotator protocol that we've set. Now this, this latest version uh, from Goody means that it's, it's not sending out that, that reset command to the Nexion. So quite often if you were having problems getting that GSC variable, um, your ne you, you would see your Nexion power up, did nothing, then the reset came along from the Arduino. It would reset the connection, then it would get the GSC. So that was all a little bit on the clunky side. So now it's really nice. Turn it on, it sits there and waits for however long it takes, then it moves on. In the situation that um, perhaps you haven't set your connection serial port correctly, or maybe you've transposed the TXD, RXD lines around and it doesn't actually receive that GSC variable, you will get a visual prompt. So what I'm doing now, I'm just um, disconnecting the received data line from the connection. We'll power cycle the system. If after five seconds it hasn't received that GSC variable, it will come up with a, a warning, next serial fail, check settings and connections. Now at that stage it still is listing for the GSC, so um, that, that anyway, that provides a visual prompt that you need to do further investigation as to why that wasn't received. Just reconnect it. There's two ways to program and update your Nexion display. First way is to copy the TFT file to a micro SD card. You'll probably need a, uh, an adapter to plug that into your card reader. Then the micro SD card pops into your Nexion. You turn the Nexion on. It will go through the update process. You can turn your Nexion off once it's finished and take out the SD, micro SD card. And if you turn it back on again, you'll see that the, uh, the update has uh, happened. The other way to do that is using the Nexion editor and opening the HMI file in the Nexion editor. Then you can program it um, using a, one of these USB to serial adapters. Now while you're doing it, if you, if you choose to do it that method, you've also got the opportunity to customise your azimuth um, maps. So for instance here, you can see I've got a customised azimuth map, that's one version and by selecting an alternate version I've got a great circle worldwide map there. So you can take advantage of, of that if you have the ability to uh, use something like Photoshop or any other imaging, image editing program. You can load those into your Nexion project. Now if for whatever reason you want to deliberately delay the Arduino sending the GSC variable to your Nexion display have a look in rotatorsettings.h and down the bottom of that file you'll see a line which you can edit. Define Nexion GSC startup delay. Now by default it's set to zero so now remembering this is milliseconds so say you wanted to delay sending that for say one second you could always make that value 1000 milliseconds. Recompile and upload to your microcontroller. But the default value of zero should work just fine. All right, so that's the latest firmware release for the uh, Nexion for the K3NG Rotator Controller project. Until next time, we'll see you then. Cheers.